I shared this last week, and I'm going to reiterate a little bit here, but what does that look like? Well, I don't know. God's moving. God's moving. What's it look like? Well, listen, it's real simple, okay? It's not deep. It's not some weird manifestation of somebody or some person or some thing. It's, it's just an operation of God that we already know. Amen. And um, I'm going to just read this again to you today because in Hebrew, in Hosea chapter 6, it talks about the fact that in the last day, after 2,000 years, uh, the Lord's going to come. But, but here's the thing I want you to hear. And I'm just going to read this um, one particular verse. Um, and I believe that I, that I don't want to you know, spend a whole lot of time on this. But it says, let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. Now listen to this. He will come to us like the rain. Amen. Like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. So if God's going to come, he's going to come like the rain. And the Bible says that he comes with the latter, former rain and the latter rain. And, and these are, these are um, pictures of how God will flow and how God flows in our life. James, in James chapter uh, 5, verse 7 and 8, talked about the same thing. And it, and it said, Be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain, waiting patiently until he receives the early and the latter rain. So if you understand that, then you understand that that's how God is coming to us. Well, we still don't know, if, if you just read those verses, well, what does that look like? Well, all you have to do is look at the former rain to understand what the latter rain is going to look like. So the foundation of the latter rain is the former rain. Thank you for your enthusiasm this morning. Can I just stop here a minute and just say something to you? If you travel to Australia, you would be 15 hours difference. If you went to Europe, you'd be five hours difference. If you went to Africa, you would be anywhere from seven, uh, five to seven hours different. How about just being a missionary in Shreveport and suck up an hour? <laughs> Give me a break. How many hours difference is it in China? 14 hours in China. And you're whining over one hour. <laughs> now, I know you're not whining as bad as the people who are not here who are still probably in bed. Or maybe they just got up in time to watch us online. <laughs> Amen? Be a missionary. Come to church. It's just an hour, folks. I mean, I go to California and it's more than that. Man, I just don't, I'm missing that one hour sleep. Go to bed an hour earlier. <laughs> Duh. Well, I can't sleep. Take drugs. <laughs> Go to sleep. <laughs> they got all kinds of things you can take without having it to be something habit for me. Amen. All right, I, I better get back to my message. I'm losing it here. So, so what, is, what does this look like? Well, we, we know from the Word of God that, that Joel prophesied about this as well, coming at, that it would be an outpouring of God's Spirit. Said he poured his Spirit out, and there would be a former and a latter rain, and then that latter rain actually is a former and a latter rain together. All right, y'all still with me? So, this is all predicated then on one simple principle, and that is 
the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's actions. Peter talked about it in, in, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 16. Listen to what he said. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Well, what's he talking about? Well, he's talking about all those people getting filled with the Holy Spirit, getting saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. And guess what? They all spoke with other tongues. Amen. Well, I don't like to talk about that. Well, then just cut that part of the Bible out. You won't be bothered with it anymore. Well, I can't do that. Well, I know you can't. This is what was spoken by prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, says the Lord, says God, that I will pour, now listen to this, out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Well, I don't believe in prophecy. Well, your sons and daughters will. Amen. Young men will see visions. Old men will shall dream dreams. I still see visions. Stay away from those dreaming. Amen. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. So <clears throat> Peter's preaching here about the former and the latter rain. And he's saying, here's what it is. It's the power of God. It's the Holy Spirit being poured out on all flesh. Doesn't mean all flesh receives it. Stephen got up and preached, and um, it was preaching to the uh, Pharisees primarily. In fact, Saul was one of them, and they, they wanted to kill him. And you know what he said? He said, you do always resist the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we can understand what God wants to do, and we can understand the magnitude of, of the latter days, which we're living in, <clears throat> based on what the Word of God says, we're there. When's Jesus coming back? Just give me a date. No, I'm not. Tomorrow. <laughs> He's coming tomorrow. Wake up in the morning and say, Jesus is coming tomorrow. And wake up the next day and say, Jesus is coming tomorrow. Pastor said He's coming tomorrow. How about we just say He's coming today and live like it every day? day. Amen. So it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. And if you go look at this, it's replicated, listen to this, throughout the book of Acts. From beginning to end, it's the same model. Why? Because he poured his Spirit out. And so you can understand and realize that that's the way God works. And the focus is on the result of that outpouring. See, we get, we get, off, we get focused on just what, what caused it, which we should. Don't misunderstand me. And that's the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit falling and the Holy Spirit being present and the Holy Spirit working. But, but that's just really the, the result or the beginning of the outpouring. What, what is the result of it? Listen to what it says and listen to what um, <clears throat> Peter said in chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you move over into a time where the Spirit of God's moving, it's also the time when you're calling on the name. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's what I want to focus on today. Because, listen, sometimes we, we, we keep all our focus in one area. And if you're not, you can kind of get a little bit of tunnel vision. But see, the, fur the purpose of what God's after is for people, listen to me, to call on His name. Y'all with me? Yes. To call on His name. Well, what's His name? Jesus. We've been singing about it today, and I didn't tell them what I was going to preach. I just, that was the Lord. Amen? So here's what I want you to understand about this. The word here, saved, is a powerful word. It's the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, all right? 
The word means saved, like we're going to be go, we're going to go to heaven, right? I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But it's if it reaches further than that, far-reaching word. When it says those who call upon the name shall be saved, that word means it will keep you safe and sound. It will rescue you from danger or destruction. It'll save you from suffering. It will save you from disease to make you well, to heal you, to restore you to health and preserve you from danger. It will rescue you. When you call on the name of the Lord, you can be saved, healed, restored, delivered. When you make up your mind to understand that any move of God that doesn't have you calling on the name of Jesus is not good. If you're calling on a man or you're looking toward a person, it's not good. But when you call on the name of the Lord, it says you can be, will be saved, healed, delivered, restored. Not only that, you get to go to heaven. Save from, save from the wrath of the, this world and the end of the world. Over in Mark, Jesus demonstrated this in his earthly ministry. There was a man in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. His name was Blind Bartimaeus. The reason he was called Bartimaeus was because he was the son of Timaeus. Yeah, that's deep, isn't it? And so he was there by the road begging. And it says in verse 47, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, and say, Jesus, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Was he calling? Now, you see, you've got to understand, you need to understand this principle. What Jesus did in his earthly ministry was demonstrate what he was going to provide through redemption. And that name had power. Bartimaeus recognized it had power. And he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Well, Jesus stopped. At first he didn't. You know, he kept going. But he, after, he, after Bartimaeus cried out several times, he stopped. And he said, bring him here. So Bartimaeus went to Jesus. And Jesus ministered to him. Actually, I think it's interesting. Jesus asked him, what do you want? You know, sometimes we think, well, we don't have to be specific. God knows what we want. Well, he knows, but he wants you to ask. He, Bartimaeus, he said, what do you want, Bartimaeus? I mean, he knew he was blind. What do you want? Well, I want to see. Well, listen to what the Word of God says in Mark chapter 10. Verse 52, listen to what it says. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Guess what that word well is? Saved. Your faith has made you saved. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. What are you saying, pastor? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. What's his name? Jesus. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. So, so when you understand the former reign, the latter reign, if people aren't calling on the Lord, something's not right. Because that's part of it. That's what, that's what Peter declared. So it talks about uh, over in Acts chapter 14, it, verse 9, there was a, a man who was crippled. And, and it says, this man heard Paul speaking, Paul observing him intently. Listen to this, seeing that he had faith to be healed. Guess what that word is? Saved. 
But then you look at it from what we would call a, I'm going to say contemporary because a, a lot of people, this is the way they preach it. It says uh, that the church was together praising God in verse 47 of chapter 2, having favor with the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who had been saved. But it's all the same word. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Now listen, when you get over into the former and the latter reign and God starts moving, it's time to start calling. It's time to start living that life where Jesus is on your lips all the time. When this happened, listen, when this former reign came, it created something. It created a whole new culture of life. A whole new way of living. It wasn't just, a, well, we got saved and we're going to live kind of around everybody else but be a little different. No, it created a whole new culture. That's why the Pharisees said they, they warned over and over again, don't use that name. Why? Because it was, it was the most powerful name ever given. Yes. Now, let me show you this. It was created, it created a whole new culture. It was created by Jesus to speak to the world. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, listen to what Jesus said. You ready? For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in their midst. We're not gathered together in the name of Sam Carr. We're not gathered together in the name of Life United. We're gathered together in the name of Jesus. We don't sing about the glories of a church. We sing about the glories of Jesus. See, we're gathered together. Well, what happens when you're gathered together? It says he's in our midst. He's in our midst. Well, you know, you have Jesus in your midst the same thing that happened when Jesus was on the earth is going to happen in multiplicity, if you want to use that word, in, in, in his ministry now. Well, Jesus isn't really here. Well, he may be or he may not be. I don't think he is or I think we'd know it. Uh, it'd be a lot more obvious. But the Holy Spirit's here. The other comforter's here. But you know, the Bible says over in Revelations that Jesus walks amongst the candlesticks. The candlesticks are the churches. The candlesticks are the churches. Do you know it also says that he's in the midst of the worshiping congregations? Well, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Well, I think he gets up and moves around. I don't think he's been sitting on that throne for 2,000 years. I think he's been walking around checking his church. How do you know that? Well, because that's what the Bible says. It says he's in our midst, whether it's by, listen, whether it's by him physically, by the Holy Spirit, or even just because of the name. Those that are gathered together in my name, I will be in their midst. I'm gathered together. We have, we it created a whole new culture, a whole new way of life. Listen, it goes further than that. Listen to what else Jesus said. These signs shall follow those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Y'all still with me? Yeah. They will take up serpents. Well, we don't play with snakes. That's not what that's talking about. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. How do you do that? In the name. See, we, we, we use that name so flippantly that it doesn't really take the authority that it should have in a lot of our names. We just say, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Well, you know what? That's all you're going to get, so, oh, Jesus. 
But when you recognize that it's a whole different culture to live under that name and live under the authority of that name and abide by that name, all of a sudden something totally different happens. When you call on that name, you shall be Because you're living in a different life. You're living a, a different culture. Jesus said this. This, is, this will kind of blow your mind. Listen to what it says in John chapter 14, verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do for you. While he was talking to the, uh, to the apostles. No, he was talking to anybody that can speak that name in faith. Right. I'm going to show you this. Just stick with me. See, you want to talk about the former and the latter rain? This latter rain is about calling on the name of Jesus. It, the Holy Spirit doesn't respond to your name. He responds to the Holy Spirit, the, to, to the name of Jesus. The angels don't respond to you. They respond to Jesus. That doesn't mean they're not for you. I've heard people say, well, you can command the angels what to do. No, you can't. You can speak the word and let them respond to the word, or, or, or you can use the name of Jesus. I'll give you an example of this. There's a lady, in fact, she, she's going to be um, 90 years old in a, in a, in a few um, uh, in a few weeks, I think, 26, I think, of this month. Her and her husband... Her name is Robbie Walters. Her and her husband opened their home to us in Texas City, Texas, when I was a novice and, and let me preach in their home. And then they moved to Arkansas and, and uh, actually opened the door for me to go up there and church started out of it. And it's a, just an amazing story. But she told this story one time uh, about uh, something that happened to her. She, she had this dream and in this dream, she saw all of these, uh, these demon spirits. And she graphically described kind of how they looked and they weren't pretty. And, you know, and, and um, they were tormenting her and she couldn't, she, she was trying to communicate and couldn't because they were making, tormenting her. And finally, she just got upset. She said, because she knew Jesus was standing right behind her. And she said, Jesus... Do something about this. The Lord didn't say anything. Finally, she got mad and said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. And every one of those demons looked up at Jesus and ran off. She turned around and said, Jesus, they thought you said that. And he smiled and said, I did. Amen. See, when you use that name in authority, listen to me. When you make up your mind that you're going to honor that name and that name's going to be a part of your life, these, these people in the beginning, they had never heard about Jesus. See, you've heard about Jesus. If you've lived in the South, you've heard about Jesus your whole life. Good, bad, and ugly, but you've heard about Jesus. But listen to me. You've got to break that mold in your life if you want to see a move of God in your life and have faith in that name. And when you call on that name... You shall be saved. saved. Why? He's in our midst. Now listen, that's not created out of a doctrine, but out of a passion for a lifestyle. I've been around that name used as a doctrine. Many years ago, uh, <clears throat> I was asked to go pray for this young man who'd had a motorcycle wreck, and what happened was he, the, he laid the bike down, and then his britches leg got caught in the chain, and the motorcycle caught on fire and burned him. Had severe burns over a large portion of his body. And uh, so, they, I don't even remember who asked me to go up there now, <clears throat> somebody from the church. So I went up there, and I walked in the, you know, the little waiting room where Family's weight, you know, he was in the burn unit. And, and again, this was, oh my Lord, 35 years ago, I guess, long time. And 
So I walked in there and, and I said, does anybody know uh, so-and-so? Yeah, we're, we're his family. And I said, well, my name's Sam Carr, pastor at that time, Word of Life. And, uh, 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 and uh, someone asked me to come up here and pray for him. So I never forget the, the, I guess it was his dad. I think it was his dad. Got a big, pretty good sized guy. It stood up and he walked over and he kind of hitched up his pants and he walked over to him and he says, well, I want to know what name you baptize with. I knew right off the bat that the name of Jesus only meant doctrine to him. I got mad. And I realized what he was trying to find out, whether I baptize in the name of Jesus or I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he was a Jesus person. But it was just doctrine with him. It had nothing to do with his son being healed. So I just said to him, I looked at him, I said, I just want you to know right now, I believe that you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit by the authority and in the name of Jesus. Now, can I pray for your son? He said, he, he started trying to think through that. And he said, okay, before he could even think about it. <laughs> so I went in there, and, and, um, and his son was in there, and, I, and he, 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 he looked pretty rough. I mean, he, he, he was really burned really bad. And, and, but I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit came on me, and I laid my hands on him. And I said, I, I speak healing to your body in the name of Jesus. I command you to be healed, whole, and healthy according to the word of God in Jesus' name. And I left. And I didn't even go back and talk to them. I just left. And so I don't remember how long, how long was it before y'all went up there? A few days later, Becky and um, I think Mary Giddens went, went with her and and they went up there, and Becky came back and said, well, he wasn't burned as bad as you thought. And I said, what do you mean? Well, he looked great. He had brand new baby skin all over his body. God had totally healed him. So I went back up there. Now, th this will tell you how long ago this was. That Back then, they kind of had wards with people, you know, and they'd have like six beds, you know, in a room together and and uh, so I went up there and I went up there to see him and and uh, he said you're the guy that prayed for me aren't you I said yes I am and I mean he just started crying and I talked to him about the Lord and he'd gotten his right life right with the Lord and uh, and I just prayed over him you know that you know for total recovery and that type of thing and uh, so he said wait, wait just a minute wait just a minute and he said hey this is the guy that prayed for me do you want him to pray for you So I went around that whole ward, just laid hands on everybody in there and prayed for them. I believe God touched every one of them. No, this name is not a cultural name. It's not a doctrinal name. It's how we live our lives. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says this. Listen, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Whatever you do. See, if you live a life worthy of that name, you'd be amazed at how much authority it will have in your life. But you've got to understand the power that's in that name. You've got to understand the purpose in that name. And I want you to listen to me. If you do, you're under the covering of the name of Jesus. Where two or three are gathered together, in my name, I am in the midst. That means that we're covered right now. Jesus is here by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because, listen to me, because we're gathered together in his name. We're not playing games. So what do you need today? What do you need today? Let me just run through a few things that the Word says that they dealt with in Acts, just so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Listen to this. Acts 2.38 says, Repent, let every one of you be baptized 
in the name of Jesus Christ, that word remission is forgiveness, for the forgiveness of sins. You need forgiveness of sins today? I got good news for you. You're covered. Jesus will forgive you. Why? Because you can call on his name. You've been struggling with sin in your life. You don't have to. You don't have to. You have forgiveness. Over in Acts chapter 13, verse 38, it says, Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man preached to you the forgiveness of sins. That's great news. You can receive forgiveness of sins. It belongs to you. Well, but you don't know what I've done. I know what Jesus did. And that name covers them all. That name covers them all. All you've got to do is be willing. You've got to make up your mind. Do you want forgiveness? Do you want to live a different way? You've got to understand that that's how we're supposed to operate and live our lives. I'm going to talk about that a little more here in a minute. But here's what you got to hear. We're covered. We're under the covering of the name of Jesus this morning. Why? If any two or three are gathered together. <laughs> we're covered. So if you need forgiveness, the Bible says repent. Do you need to be baptized? We'll baptize you. Well, how are you going to baptize me? Just like I said. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, by the authority and in the name of Jesus. That way, it don't matter who asks you, you can tell them. Were you baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Yes. Were you baptized in the name of Jesus? Yes. I don't want to get in an argument about it, but to be honest with you, they baptized in the name of Jesus in the, in the book of Acts. That's not a denominational statement. That's not a doctrinal statement. That's a statement of fact. That's all it is. I don't know about you, but if that name's the name above all names, and that's, how I'm, and that's the person who died for my sins, I believe that's the one I'd want to be baptized in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I may be stepping on some of your doctrine right now, but it, it might need stepping on. Amen. Over the book of, now I'm going to just show you a few things here that, you, that, that covers this, but, but just so you'll understand this. Um, over in the book of Acts, Peter and John are freshly filled with the Holy Spirit. Been walking with Jesus for three and a half years. Saw the death, burial, resurrection. And they're walking into the temple, the hour of prayer. And when they're walking down there, there's a lame man is by that, by that door every day of his life. Never been, never walked. He walked, they walked by the door and this lame man looked at him asking alms. And Peter looked at him and said, look at me. Silver and gold, I ain't got any. I don't have any cash on me. You know, you don't take credit cards. I don't have any cash on me, but what I do have, what belongs to me, y'all listening to me? What belongs to me, what I do have, I will give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The Bible says that Peter reached down and grabbed him by the hand. If you study that out in the Greek, it says he grabbed him firmly. He didn't just grab him. He jerked him up. And the man jumped up, started leaping and walking and praising God because of that name. Silver and gold, I don't have, but what I have, I'll give it to you. And here it is. You ready for it? The name. In the name of Jesus. So later on, he's, everybody's gathered around, you know, and, and so he made, Peter told him, made this statement in verse 16. He said, his name, now listen to me, here's where you got to operate. His name, through faith in his name, 
has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That name. It wasn't Peter's apostleship. It was the name. It was the name of Jesus that did it. Acts 4.10 says that it was by this name, listen to me, but by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. When you use that name in authority, when you understand the value and the power of that name, listen to me, it's as though Jesus himself was doing it. If you disrespect it and you look at a person, that's why you have to understand it's the name. It's the power and the authority of the name. And when you don't, when you don't disrespect that, you don't receive anything. Listen, we are carriers of the name and all that it stands for. It's more than just the name. It's, it's all that it stands for. Everybody still with me? Let me read you a scripture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse, verse, um, verses 11 and 12. It says, Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith by power. I like the Phillips translation there says, all things that your faith makes possible. Why? That the name, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of God of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, once you start operating in that name, once your faith has started to be attached and you're living that life, all of a sudden people say, you, you carry a name with you, don't you? Yeah, I do. I carry a name with me. It's not Sam Carr. It's Jesus. You know why it's Jesus? Because whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's where your deliverance is. That's where your power is. That's where, when you operate and appropriate God's blessings in your life, listen, God starts working in your life. Let me read you another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You can't go around, you can't carry around sin in your life and expect that name to be all powerful in your life when you can use it for forgiveness. But listen to what, listen to what Paul said. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators or idolaters or adulterers or homosexuals or sodomites or thieves or covetous or drunkards or revilers or extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such... Were some of you? I'm looking out. I know some of you. <laughs> Such were some of you, but listen to this. You were washed. You were sanctified. You were, listen to this, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. You can't have it both ways. You can't live like you want to live. You have to be washed, sanctified, so that that name can be of value. So that it can work in your life. It can have power in your life. I've told this story many times, but, but it's still to me. Well, let me read this real quick to you. Listen to what Timothy said. I'm going to just read a portion of this. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 says, Let everyone who names the name of Christ... Depart from iniquity. You can't live an iniquitous life, listen to me, and use that name. It won't work. It might work to bring you deliverance, to bring you back where you need to be, 
But you have to live in the authority of that life. You've got to depart from iniquity. Why? Because God's goodness, he wants his goodness manifested through you. I, I, I've said this many times in, in the past about, but when Becky and the girls were in that car accident many years ago, um, <clears throat> and I got to the scene and it was chaotic. I mean, helicopter was there, life helicopter and fire trucks and police cars and smoke and the car, one of the cars was on fire and, and I, I was looking for Becky and I, I didn't know where to look and all of a sudden I heard her. Jesus! Jesus! She was calling on that name. Calling on that name. That didn't come out of her head. That came out of her spirit. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to live in that place where that name comes out. And it doesn't come out as a curse word. It doesn't come out as a paraphrase. It comes out as an authoritative word to deal with the circumstances of your life. And you can't do that and live any other way. We already talked about the fact you can be baptized in the name of Jesus. What does that mean to be baptized into the name? It means you're covered by that name. Until you step out from under that cover, and you can, if you want to walk in iniquity, if you want to walk in sin, you can step out from That doesn't mean, I don't know about, well, yeah, I thought you don't believe in once saved, always saved. I believe in once saved, stay saved. <laughs> but that name is given you, it's given as an authority. Paul cast out spirits with the name. The Bible said we could cast out spirits with the name. I've, had, I've done this in so many different occasions, so many different ways. I shared with you uh, recently about, about one particular case. But I remember one time I was in Australia. And um, um, we, we, uh, a friend of mine who was, who was he, we were preaching together in a, in a meeting there, Dennis Burke, and we were, we were there in the, in the uh, hotel. And I went to bed that night, and I was sound asleep, you know, because of the time change, you know. And I mean, I was sound asleep. I was tired. And all of a sudden, I woke up and my room was just like it was ice cold. And there was no light coming into the room. It was black, pitch black. And I perceived instantly that there was a spirit in that room. And I sat up in bed and I said, you foul spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to leave this place now. Instantly, the air was back to normal. Light creeped in the room where it was before. So the next morning, I'm having lunch with Dennis. And I said, Dennis, the wildest thing happened to me last night. And, and uh, he said, well, let me tell you what happened to me. Same thing happened to him. And we never could figure out who was first, but he blamed, he said, well, he said, he blamed me. He said, I, he, I sent it to him. I think it was the other way around. I don't know. But, but what we found out was later that day, we noticed all these book tables out. And they were having this little convention there at the hotel. And it was, it was spiritists having this convention. Those spirits were roaming about, seeking whom they could devour. They came in the wrong room. You have that kind of authority. Well, my child has just been tormented by bad dreams. Lay your hands on them. In the name of Jesus, command those spirits to leave them alone. Well, what if they don't? Say it again. Don't give up. You stand in authority. You have the right. You're covered by that name. It says over in Acts that Philip went out and preached the name of Jesus. How do you preach the name of Jesus? Just like I am today. You talk about the authority of it. It's not just a name. It's not just Jesus who died for us. It's Jesus that we're covered by. It's his authority, his power. We have his name in our lives. Let me read you one more scripture. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. Listen to what it says. God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. That the name of, at the name of Jesus, 
Every knee should bow. Now listen to this. Of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That name has authority in all three realms. You go to, you go to the Father in the name of Jesus. You have authority on this earth in the name of Jesus. And you have authority over demons in the underworld in the name of Jesus. It belongs to you. You're covered by it. When you get, listen to me. When the power of God is poured out, when the Holy Spirit's poured out, it's so that we can call on the name of Jesus. We stepped over, we step over into a culture. We step over into a power. We step over into a, an authority. But you've got to live in it. It's not something. Now, what was that, Pastor? How did he say we did that? Let me think about it. Me. You've got to live it. I remember one time Becky and I were coming back from Houston, and somehow we missed the weather report that there was ice on the way back. And we, we got stuck. We were cutting through the country coming back, and, and we got stuck coming into out of center Texas into Joaquin up, up in that area, and it was icy. There wasn't anybody on the road. I mean, people, we were the only crazy people out there. <laughs> we didn't know it. We didn't realize it. And we were coming down the road, and all of a sudden, listen, all of a sudden, the car just started sliding. Not just the front wheels, all four wheels just started sliding into a ditch. The most amazing thing happened. Becky and I, at the very same moment, started calling out the name of Jesus. Calling out that name. And I don't know how to explain it other than that that, 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 that car turned right back up on the road. I didn't turn it back up on the road. I had no control over it. And it just turned right back up on the road and we made it, we made it home. That name can be used in every area of your life. <clears throat> you can speak that name. The devils tremble at that name. Yes. Now, if, listen to me. If you're not right with the Lord, you want to play games with that name. You don't want to do that because there were some people that did that in the Bible. They were going to cast out demons by, in the name of Jesus, the one that Paul preached. You better not go cast out something because Pastor Sam preached it. You better do it because you know it for yourself. You better know it because you, you know it for yourself. And your family needs to be covered. People, well, I cover my family with the blood. Well, I know there's a symbolism there about the blood of Jesus on the doorpost. But I want to tell you something. The reality is, it's the name of Jesus that covers. It's the name of Jesus. So when that flow of, the, of this wonderful flow that we're in right now, we're, it's going to get stronger and stronger. It's all about Jesus. It's all about him. It's all about his authority, his power. It has nothing to do with us. It's just us submitted to it. And that way, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.